Good evening. Welcome to each one of you. Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus. This evening we again continue our journey to the hill of Calvary and we see the greatness of our Savior's love for each one of us. Uh, in this Lenten season. We'll be following the order of service as it's printed in the the folder. Uh, It's on the table there if you don't have one. Uh, Feel free to pick one of those up. So let's begin. The opening response is on page one. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at last. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To herald your love in the morning. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And we pray. Jesus, may our hearts be burning with more fervent love for you. May our Let's use this one. Jesus, we will ponder now on your holy passion with your spirit us endow for such meditation. Grant that we in love and faith may the image cherish of your suffering, pain, and death that we may not perish. Amen. Let's join together in singing our opening hymn. It is hymn 714, The Lamb, which of of course uh, is the the picture, well, we see it in the banner, uh, the picture of Jesus, the sacrificial lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It's in the supplement, uh, the paper, bluish paperback uh, hymnal that should be uh, in your pew or near that.
Please stand. We make confession of our sins as we continue on the top of page two. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, and in all the good we have failed to do. Forgive us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore us that we may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. Let us rest in peace until the rising of the sun, when we shall serve him in newness of life. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Our psalm for this evening, again, one of the penitential psalms, is Psalm 38. You find this on page 81 in the front part of your hymnal. Let's sing together Psalm 38. Lord God, our refuge and fortress, your faithfulness has protected us throughout this day. Now send your holy angels to guard us from danger throughout this night. Give us peaceful rest, free from fear, that we may awake refreshed to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We hear the word of our Lord, we could call it our gospel lesson for this evening, uh, as it is uh, portrayed for us in the visual Bible. It's from uh, Matthew chapter 26 this evening. Uh, Our main section here starts at verse 46. So if uh, we could have the lights out, since uh, daylight saving time has happened, now the sun is, is still quite high. If anybody would care to stand in front of the windows, I'll stand by this one. Uh, I'll block out a little bit of the light anyway.
for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it your will be done When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near. And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise. Let us go. Here comes my betrayer. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. One I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, kissed him. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came for. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place! Jesus said to him, For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. You think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? At that time, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you come out with swords and clubs to capture me every day? I sat in the temple courts teaching and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled.
the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter... That is our uh, segment for this evening from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 26. Uh, again, I think uh, we will, if you have thoughts or observations, comments, uh, we'll maybe take those after the service here. Uh, so let's continue on page three with the uh, responses there. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. We join together in the singing of our next hymn, hymn 120, What Wondrous Love Is This, hymn 120. Peace to you and comfort in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 
The word of God for a special focus this evening is from Mark's gospel. This is chapter 14, starting here at verse 41. Again, we go back to the Garden of Gethsemane. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. This is the word of our God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord Jesus, our Savior, as we follow in your footsteps on the way to Calvary, each step of the way we see even more clearly the greatness of your love for us. Lord, open our hearts and our minds once again this evening as we ponder these wonderful truths which you have given to us in the Holy Scriptures. Lord, send your Holy Spirit to enlighten our hearts and our minds. Lord, we pray this all in your name. Amen. In the name of Jesus, the one who is our faithful Savior, fellow travelers once again to the hill of Calvary in this Lenten season. We think of betrayal, and betrayal is such a difficult thing for a person to deal with. Betrayal, that's what happens when, when somebody puts their trust in someone else and then that person not only uh, lets them down but actually goes over to the other side and actively works against them. You know, and if you Google betrayal or betrayer uh, online, uh, you will undoubtedly be able to find lists of people who are notorious for being betrayers. We might think of, of Brutus and uh, Julius Caesar, uh, thinking perhaps of, of Shakespeare's play. And uh, the et tu, Brute, you know, Brutus betrayed betrayed there in that that story or we might think of you know american history you know if you think of that probably the name benedict arnold comes to mind rather quickly you know someone who who was fighting shoulder to shoulder with uh, our leaders and our soldiers during the time of the revolutionary war and then and then went over to the other side and actively waged war against the American side. But you know, if you look at, at any list of betrayers, most likely the one that's going to be at the top of that list is Judas Iscariot, the one that we hear about in the word of our God before us this evening. So this evening we do want to go once again to that Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus is there with his disciples. And we, we want to see another of those crucial hours of Lent. So may God the Holy Spirit bless us this evening as we look this evening at the betrayal hour. And the first thing that we see here is this warning to see the, the power of Satan's lies. Well, last week we looked at the praying hour as Jesus was there in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was there with his disciples, at least 11 of them. Uh, he was there with them. And as Jesus was, was reaching out to those disciples, uh, really in essence asking for, so, for some support from them, they let him down. But his heavenly father did not let him down. Uh, although the heavenly father didn't take away the cup of suffering that Jesus had prayed that he would do, the heavenly father sent an angel to strengthen him, to, to strengthen him for this mammoth task that lay ahead of him, that task of winning forgiveness and salvation for this world of sinners. 
And so we saw the tail end of it in, in the video presentation this evening. Uh, Jesus prays three times to his heavenly father each time the disciples fall asleep. Uh, but, but then he returns and the scriptures tell us that immediately while he was still speaking, then that, that arresting crowd comes. That crowd that the Bible tells us were those people from the, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. So they, they arrive. Now, those, those people, the, the chief priests, teachers of the law, and the elders, most likely they weren't there. They were probably at home in their living rooms in their recliners or something like that. Uh, but, but they had sent these, these trained soldiers to arrest Jesus together with uh, the, the police department, you could say, and a lot of others who were in that arresting crowd as well. And who is there among them but that other one of Jesus' disciples, uh, Judas Iscariot. Mark calls him here one of the 12. This is one of Jesus' 12 uh, chosen disciples who had been with Jesus uh, for most of three years. And, and then Judas Iscariot, Judas goes to Jesus probably a lot like you saw in the, in the video here tonight, uh, probably kind of hard to even see it. Well, I suppose that's probably how it was. It was in the darkness of the night, and just to make sure that that, that arresting crowd got the right one, they had prearranged this signal uh, that Judas would, would indicate who Jesus is by giving him a disciple's kiss. And so he, he betrays him to this, this arresting crowd. I just think about Judas for a moment. You know, from everything that we know from Scripture uh, leading up to this point, or at least close to this point, you know, Judas was a true faithful believer and follower of Jesus. You know, he had been there, as I said, with Jesus for the past three years. He had heard Jesus teaching. He had been an eyewitness to, to many of the miracles that Jesus had performed. Uh, Judas was the treasurer of the group. Well, what does that say about him? It must, it must indicate that at least the other disciples trusted him, that they would... Uh, entrust the, the finances to him. And we think of other things uh, about, about Judas. You remember when Jesus sent out the 12 on a preaching mission to go to the towns and villages around? Judas must have been there. Judas must have been one of those who went out to those towns and villages to, to say that the kingdom of God is near, to say that the Lord has sent the promised Messiah, the one that we've all been waiting for. Judas was there. Judas was even there in the upper room, at least for a while, in the upper room in Jerusalem with, with Jesus and the other disciples. When Jesus indicated to Judas that he knew what Judas was doing, he knew uh, the, the betrayal that he was arranging, that he had arranged, and that, that he was going to carry out. But Satan had entered into Judas so that he had turned his heart away from Jesus and Judas had, had made those arrangements that he would, he would turn Jesus over to his enemies for the price of 30 silver coins, the price of a slave. That's the arrangement that he had made to betray him to his enemies and, and you know, we, we see once again the, the truth of, of that familiar passage from Holy Scripture that, that the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. You know, the, the temptations of Satan are truly powerful. His lies, his lies, his deception is powerful. 
And so we do well to, to beware, to beware of, of the power of his lies. And, and you don't need me to tell you how, how dangerous those temptations can be, especially that temptation that Judas gave into, to make, to make money, to make the, the things that money can buy, the comforts and the pleasures and all of that, to make that the most important thing in life rather than the Lord. It goes right back to the very first commandment. Uh, and, and the devil is, is so powerful in those temptations in our lives as well. And in all kinds of other lies and deceptions. And with, with Judas here, notice how, how one sin leads to another, and it leads to another, and it leads to another. And, and we all know that that's the way it can work with, with us as well. The Lord is calling us to beware of the lies, those powerful lies of the devil. But we also see here from this account, we see the power of Jesus' love for sinners. See, Jesus goes out and, and meets this arresting crowd. And, and we, we know and we understand that Jesus had the power to, to sidestep you know, that arresting crowd and to, to do whatever he wanted, to, uh, to simply avoid that, to avoid the cross altogether with all of the suffering and the pain that went along with that, not only physically, but the spiritual pain and suffering of the sins of the world uh, loaded down on his shoulders. He had the power to sidestep all of that, but we know that that's not what he did. And, and Jesus even showed that he had the power to do that. You know, with this, this arresting crowd coming to him and, and Judas betrays him so that everybody in the crowd can know exactly this is the one that, that we're here for, this, this one lone, unarmed rabbi. We have come out, what, dozens or maybe scores of people, maybe even hundreds of people, uh, that they, they come out to arrest Jesus. And, and, you know, who are they? As I say, they're, they're trained Roman soldiers, battle-ready Roman soldiers, and they're the, the police force and, and others who have joined that crowd. When Jesus goes to meet them, and then he asks, who are you looking for? They respond, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus says, I am he. And what happens? Boom, they all fall over, flat on their backs, simply by the power of Jesus' word. And, and he could have just walked right through the crowd or, or struck every one of them dead on the spot or whatever he wanted to do, whatever he wanted to do, but that would not be carrying out his heavenly Father's will of laying down his life for the sins of all of the world. And so Jesus willingly, willingly gave himself over to that arresting crowd, knowing full well the, the pain and agony that, that was in store for him in the hours to come. So we, we see that Jesus had the power to avoid all of this, but he didn't. But notice even more importantly, Notice the, the amazing love that he shows. The, the love that he shows even to the betrayer. If that would have been you or me, what would we have been thinking? We probably would have very easily been thinking about, about anger at least, at least. And maybe revenge and all kinds of things like that. But, but Jesus is continuing to try to call to call Judas to repentance, to turn away from this, this path of self-destruction, this path leading him toward damnation in hell. Jesus is trying to turn him away from that. Jesus is showing his heart of love even for his betrayer and also for the other 11 disciples too. Jesus says, it's me, I, I'm the one you're looking for. These let them all go. I'm the one you're looking for. So he's showing his love and concern for the other disciples there. 
And Jesus certainly is, is showing his loving concern for each and every sinner in this world, you and I included. The scriptures tell us that the reason the Son of Man appeared was to destroy the works of the devil, to break that power of sin. And that meant that Jesus needed to allow himself to be arrested there in the Garden of Gethsemane because that was part of his mission. Jesus needed to allow himself to be captured and taken to trial and ultimately nailed to the cross because his purpose for being here in this world was to give up his life as the payment for all of the sins of the world. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And so we ponder, we ponder this this betraying hour. And we need to listen to this warning that our Savior is giving to us about the, the power of Satan's lies and his deceptions. But even more, we need to listen and observe Jesus showing the power of his love for sinners. Sinners like you and me, because Jesus is there for us. May that message continue to, to warm our hearts with that message of his love and continue to build up our faith in him and our thanksgiving as we live for him with every moment of our lives. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. The congregation may be seated once again. We pray the responsive prayer toward the bottom of page three of your service folder. Let us pray. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness I shall see you. O God, our Father, by your mercy and might, the world turns safely into darkness and returns again to light. We place into your hands our unfinished tasks, our unsolved problems, and our unfulfilled hopes, knowing that only what you bless will prosper. To your great love and protection, we commit each other and all those we love, knowing that you alone are our sure defender. We pray to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's join together then in the singing of our next hymn, hymn 126, Lord Jesus, you are going forth, hymn 126.
Please stand then as we join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and keep us. Amen. Please be seated then for our closing hymn, hymn 590, God Who Made the Earth and Heaven, hymn 590. Once again, good evening. Good to be with you here this evening. Uh, if you would, please, uh, as you leave uh, this evening, if you would return the order of worship folder, that would be appreciated. Uh, maybe before we uh, go to other things here, does anybody have any, any thoughts or questions on this segment from uh, Matthew's Gospel uh, that we, we viewed, and really that was what the, the sermon text and the sermon uh, was about Jesus' betrayal there in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, any questions maybe come to mind or any uh, things that par particularly struck you? Anybody? Maybe everything's crystal clear then, huh? Okay, well, uh, if, if you have questions or thoughts, uh, feel free to share them afterwards here too. 
I do believe there are refreshments that have been prepared for us here, so I uh, hope you can stay and, and enjoy that with us and enjoy a time of, of fellowship. Uh, so why don't we join together in the table prayers before we do that. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Amen.